Welcome back to the virtual hangar. Today I am going to show you how to make a cool project out of cardboard and get you ready for this week's cardboard challenge in the hangar maker tournament. I'm not going to give a lot of specific measurements in this project because as you can see here cardboard comes in a lot of different sizes and thicknesses so it's best to just adapt to what you have in your house depending on kind of what you order. You might have thin stuff or you might have thick stuff like this. Um, it just kind of depends but I'm following a tutorial I found online and hopefully even if you have something cardboard in your house that's like this weird roll of kind of single ply stuff I have you should be able to make it work. I would also recommend an exacto knife as the easiest thing to cut cardboard with. Um, a box cutter could also work or maybe even some scissors but you'd want to use heavier ones probably than these. I use a giant cut mat which is the most useful thing I have but if you don't have that you can use a regular kitchen cutting board um, just not for meat. Uh, you'll also need white glue uh, to attach cardboard. Um, hot glue is also going to be really advantageous because it dries so quickly but be careful. Um, and then you might want some scotch tape to cut out your pattern pieces. So like I said I found this tutorial on Instructables. I'll post the link in the description of the video. So you will need to go there to download the pattern and print it out. Once it's printed, you can just cut out all of the pieces with scissors. I bet you know how to do that, so I'm not going to show you how to do all of them. But there is one piece that I would rather cut out in one whole piece of cardboard that the designer cut here into two. So you're going to connect this side with that side. I want to make it into one pattern piece. So to do that, I'm just going to cut away the other pieces on that sheet so that I don't have to worry about them. And you can see I left here the edges. These are the two pieces where these are going to connect. Um, and I'm going to leave paper here so that it overlaps so that when we tape it together, we're not trying to cut these two perfectly square. Cut one side out, follow the lines, cut it all the way out and leave the spare paper on the other side of the pattern piece. Once you got that one side cut out, go ahead and tape it, overlap it with the outline of the piece that you haven't cut all the way out. This makes it so you don't have to butt the two cut ends together and you'll get the perfectly sized pattern piece whenever you're trying to cut it out. Tape the one side, flip it over and lay it flat, tape the back side, and then once it's taped and it's not crinkled, just go ahead and cut the entire piece out. So I'm just gonna finish cutting up. This is the longest piece in the thing. Make sure you have cardboard to actually cut this piece out. Um, but here are all my pattern pieces. Those are the sails. These are the deck. Uh, these are the cross pieces in the center of the body. And then these are the other cross pieces. So this goes on the very bottom, the rudder. And I don't actually know what this pointy piece is called. <laughs> but um, these cross sections you can see uh, will interlock kind of like this. But I don't want to glue these pieces at a T. I want these to have interlocking joints. So what I'm actually going to do is change the pattern so that these will interlock. So what I'm going to do is take this cross section. I'm going to lay some tape up. Um, I'm using scotch tape to secure the sticky side up. And I'm going to align all of these pieces from the bottom. I'm going to use some cardboard to make sure that distance is the same on my pattern as it will be for the actual cardboard that I need. Um, and I'm just going to space those out as I align them on the tape. Uh, for C and D, those share a deck piece. So make sure the top on those is aligned actually instead. Um, but you do want to just make sure the gaps between each of these pieces is about the width of the cardboard you're going to be using to cut out this cross section center piece. So um, you can cut off the extra masking tape or you can not cut it off. It doesn't really matter. Um, but once you've got that tape, they're taped and spaced. I'm taking a two inch piece of paper because that's about half the height here of my smallest pieces. So I just take that and stick it right on the sticky part from the masking tape and flip it over. And then I'm going to secure it towards the top of that strip of paper with some scotch tape just so it doesn't move around. So once it's all taped, I flip it over and cut off the extra paper there with my scissors um, just so that this is going to be the piece we actually trace when we put it on the cardboard. So now it's all done. That's going to be my new pattern piece. I'm going to align it here with the bottom of this piece piece of cardboard because if you don't have to cut out one of the lines it's only going to make it easier. So I just put a little bit of tape so that this pattern doesn't wiggle while I'm trying to trace it. 
and I trace it with my pencil so that I can more easily cut it out with the X-Acto knife. It's a lot easier to follow a pencil when you're cutting stuff out than to freehand it for sure. So once you've traced it, just take your pattern off. You can throw it away and it doesn't matter. And then uh, don't forget your cutting mat. And then you're going to cut out your cardboard piece with your X-Acto knife. There's a lot of... Um, technique here to get nice clean lines, but a lot of it is mostly practice. Straight lines are always going to be easier, so it's whenever possible, just cut everything straight first, remove as much excess as you can, and then follow the straight lines. You are going to want to make longer, shallower cuts a bunch of times rather than try and muscle your way all the way through with the knife. And of course, if you came in to use the Glowforge in the hanger, all of these cuts would be perfect, cut out with the laser. But since we're doing it with the X-Acto, we do want to check the width of all of our cuts. So I just take some of the cardboard and make sure that I can get it into all of these cross sections. If there's one that's a little too thin still, you can just widen it with some scissors and that should widen it right up much easier than going back with the X-Acto. So once the middle is done, we have to do the other pieces of the cross section that go in to make the body of our ship. So we just wanna mark that point. It should be two inches up from the bottom of all of these kind of shieldy shaped pieces. I fold them in half to find the midpoint and then measure up that two inches from the bottom of it. I center this cardboard that's gonna be the same thickness of the piece we just cut out and I'm gonna just mark that um, on either side of the midpoint so that we can cut this slit out of the bottom. So you're gonna have to cut a slit the width of that cardboard on two, four, and five and then trace all of those pattern pieces onto the cardboard. So when I cut these uh, cross pieces, I wanna actually make sure that I'm cutting with the grain of the cardboard instead of against the corrugation like I'm doing here on this curved part. The straight part, I want to go in the same direction as the straight parts of the cardboard because that's gonna give it more structural integrity. It's harder to bend across that corrugation than it is to go up and down. So uh, once I've got the first one cut out, I'm just gonna demonstrate how these two are gonna interlock. And this is gonna make a much stronger joint than if I had done all of those separate pieces and tried to glue along this line. So you can see it fits in this slat and it's flat across the top. And I will do all the other cross section pieces with that same alignment. The only other piece you need to worry about how the pattern lines up on the cardboard is actually going to be the sail pieces. So when we do our sails, um, we want them to bend as if there was wind blowing. So they're going to bend that way. So when we do it on the cardboard, we want to cut the curved area across the grain and the flat areas with the grain. So this would be the incorrect way because cardboard won't bend like that. It will bend like this. So when you cut, make sure the uh, flat lines, not these angled lines on the sides, but the top and bottom of the sails should go with the exact straight line of the cardboard. And then these lines should go across so you can see the corrugation on the side. So I just take a rolling pin and roll my cardboard along it. You can use the edge of your table. You could use any other round thing you have. I just bake a lot, so this is what I have. Um, and that's going to make our sails nice and curved. So these are all of the pieces of the body cut out now. I've got the cross pieces. These are the deck pieces here at the top. Um, and then the long piece. So you can see the bottom one that I didn't put the slat in. That's going to be the back. I'm going to mark the edge here um, where it hits before that curve because that curve is actually going to line up. Um, we're going to need to bend it along that line. So I use this flat edge um, to hit that bend and then I just curve the bottom half in the same way with the rolling pin. Check to make sure you have all of your pieces lined up in order, ready to go before you glue, and then use the hot glue or white glue to attach at this joint. Um, the benefit of the hot glue is you can kind of adjust it to make that 90 degree angle perfect as it's drying. Um, and it doesn't take as long to dry, especially say if you're making a video for library patrons. Um, but white glue would make that joint a little bit stronger, I think, and you could clamp it to make sure it was perfectly 90 degrees. So um, I just put it along the slats and hold it until I like that 90 degree angle. Be really careful, you. I burned my hands a bunch of times, but you can see it square up. Then I'm gonna take this long piece here, which has the rudder and the end pointy bit. 
just to check that all the cross section pieces fit inside of it. So once you're sure it fits, uh, I would take this curve part, start there with the glue and uh, curve the cardboard against the rudder. And then you are going to need a lot of hot glue. The more hot glue you put down, the longer it takes to dry and the more time you'll have to work with it. There is a greater chance of burns. So, you know, know your own limits. But if you only do a little bit of glue, you won't have enough time to get from one end to the other before the glue dries. Start at the back and go towards the front and you should be able to bend it away from the cross section enough to get that extra glue on there. Make sure you hold it until it dries. Uh, before today, I would have said I know what that pointy bit is called, but apparently Google says it's the bow sprit, and I've never heard that word in my life. So anyways, once the glue is dry, this is what the body of your ship will look like. Before we can move on, um, we do need to cut the rails for the deck. So these are the deck pieces, and what you're going to do is trace around the outer edge. This is the frontmost piece that goes towards the bowsprit, <laughs> I guess. Um, and I just trace them with my pencil, and I want them to be about half an inch thick. I just eyeball it on the one, and I'm going to use that one to copy. So I cut out the first one. And I should have lined this up with the bottom edge, but I just follow this curve over and then I get tired of it and use the scissors to get that little bit. Just follow it all the way to the edge, cutting the first piece out. And then I'm going to check the alignment. So if you can't figure out why they don't line up, uh, make sure that you have actually cut out the entire piece. See, I missed the bottom inch there on the edge. So I'm going to go ahead and take my scissors and now it matches perfectly. So once you have one cut out, I actually ended up cutting out two of each piece for the deck rails. I just think it makes it look a little bit sturdier. So I cut the one out, put it down and trace the inner line with the pencil. And that makes sure I get two exact copies of the same piece for each of these rails. Again, if we were using the laser cutter at the library, it would be perfect, but I'm just gonna do my best and it's gonna look fine. So there you go. I've got my two pieces here. I'm gonna would actually glue these together with white glue instead of hot glue. I think those would give it a little bit too much dimension. Um, but while those are gluing, I'm gonna do the rest of my rails. So I am just doing the outside of the two innermost deck pieces, just those two outer edges, because this is gonna be the outermost edge of the boat. But I am gonna use the front railing that I used to make the thickness of those rails. So I'm just gonna eyeball it, follow those same curves. And these ones I did line up with the bottom. So I cut the first one out and if I eyeball it well enough, I can double check, uh, make sure it gets through all the way the cardboard before you pull it out. I should be able to line up that inner with the outer of the front one I just cut out. So I just line those two up, trace around the piece that I just finished cutting, and then I only have to cut one side of, instead of cutting the whole thing fresh from the beginning. So that way I don't have to make as many of those difficult curved cuts. So I will do that same thing on the rest of the middle pieces, but for the very back piece, I'm going to line up the back back edge with the edge of my cardboard and I'm going to cut out kind of a C or a U shape. I'm going to use that rail I already cut from one of the side pieces and trace that for the thickness, um, mostly because we want it to be mostly the same across. But you can see I'm doing the side and then I'm doing the back here. And then I'm just going to eyeball it because honestly I'm not that picky. So you can see this U C shape and that's what I'm going to cut out for the rest of the deck. Now to do the sides of the boat, I'm going to cut out a whole bunch of of one inch strips from the cardboard. Um, it's easiest to use a hard edge up against to keep your blade flat, um, but you are gonna need like a whole lot of these. These are gonna be the planks on the side of your boat. So we're gonna take our cross section we made and I'm just gonna use hot glue and attach it from the middle. So I'm really only putting glue on the front four cross sections here and I'm holding it until it dries. Um, I just wanna make sure that the strip covers the entire length of the boat before I worry about aligning it perfectly. And then I'm gonna just keep layering these strips on with the hot glue. When I add the next strip, I'm just going to overlap the bottom of that strip with the top of the one that I already glued down so they get a little bit of overlap. And if you wanted to use strips that were narrower than one inch, it probably wouldn't hurt. It might even look better. The narrower the strip is, the more accurately you're going to be able to follow the curve of this boat. It's a lot harder to take one big rectangle and try it 
make it follow this kind of like football-y sort of shape than it is to make the individual strips follow that curve. So that's the reason we do strips and also because it looks like cool wood planks. So you can see even with the time lapse how long the hot glue takes to dry, but you just want to work from the bottom of the boat all the way up to the top and you might need shorter ones for the top bit of the decks. And then I just trim the back end of each strip to follow the curvature of the back of the boat before I kind of lift them up and glue them all to attach them. I need some more glue stick in this gun. <laughs> but just press them down, make sure that they follow that curve and overlap naturally. You don't want anything to stick out kind of weird. And then do the same on the front side of the boat to attach. So this are all the rails I cut out for the deck piece. You can see how they line up. And we are going to attach the deck pieces to the top cross section of our boat next. So I just put the hot glue on them and then press the deck pieces on. And I'm going to do that across the entire boat. And you might find, like I did, that these deck pieces don't really line up with the curves you've made here. So make sure that you test it first before you cut out all of your rails. And then I just trim them down with scissors. So... The rest of the body is just details, so I cut out a bunch of quarter inch strips, different widths of strips, to just do some trim on the body of the boat. Um, I cut them at an angle to look like decorative planks, almost like chair rail, that I attached with a smaller hot glue gun. You can also see I just rolled some smaller pieces to make the posts to go under the railings as well. I cut out some squares with squares inside to make windows to go on the back. Um, I think I end up cutting seven of those in total that I attach to the back and the sides of the boat. And I also use some of those strips to make planking in between all of these windows. I use the small hot glue gun to attach these after I cut them to size and I put them all over the sides of the boat. I also cut some smaller circle windows that I just attach to the sides. So next I am going to make the masts. I start with curling a big piece of cardboard around my rolling pin. I end up cutting three big masts. I use 14 and a half inches, 12 and a half inches, and I think nine inches to make the three masts. I really only square up the two short edges of this rectangle before I finish them because I don't know how thick I'm going to have these be by the time they roll. So I start, I square the one long edge here um, and I just start rolling it first and then I add hot glue and glue as I roll. Um, again, this is going to be really hot. Please be careful but the hot glue is going to let it keep that rolled structure. You won't have to wait for it to dry before you keep rolling. Um, so once I get approximately as thick as I want it to be, I will square off the last edge with my straight edge and my X-Acto knife. I just cut it off and then I'm actually going to um, do a little bit more with the hot glue, but then I'm going to switch to white glue just to finish it off because I don't want it to be extra thick from the bulk of the hot glue. But I will do the last seam here with the hot glue so that I don't have to try and find a way to clamp this thing all rolled up. So you will need three of those big masts and then use that same technique to make a bunch of smaller rails that are the widths of the different edges of your sails. So you'll see what I mean here. So I've got my bent sails, which I painted ahead of time and I am going to attach the top of the sails to these cross beams with hot glue. I'm just gonna press these onto the top edge of the beam when they're lying on the table. I want the beam to be between the sail and the table. So you can see, I am also going to put some hot glue on the inside seam after it's dried, and that'll just give it a little bit more of support. I'm gonna do that for the bottom sail of this mast, and then just use a little bit on the bottom to connect that curved corner to the edges. This is how I'm going to assemble the rest of the sails. I'm just going to line them all up here with their beams and their masts so you can see how they line up. Once you have all of your beams attached to your sails, you're going to attach each beam to the mast. Just hold it as you're bending it until the glue dries so that when the glue dries it will maintain this curve. So I started with the bottom beam because I had to measure that to make sure it wouldn't hit the rails on the side of our deck. So once I have one done I just measure that against the other masts before I attach them to make sure that I don't accidentally hit my sails on any of my deck railing. 
And once all my masks are done, I'm just going to use a big glob of hot glue on the side and on the bottom and attach them to the deck. The last thing I'm going to do is take an egg carton and use my paper mache skills and hot glue to make a base for my ship. So I gave it a good layer of blue paint and then I just take some white paint to make the kind of frothy edges of the waves. So here is my finished piece. You could add more detail or paint if you wanted to be more artsy with it. But for this week's challenge, I want to see your most impressive cardboard structure and how much weight it can hold. So here's some more examples. Um, there's a link in the description to all the submission guidelines for the challenge. You have one week and the winner in this challenge can win $50 gift card to Michaels. Um, but do remember that this challenge is part of the whole hanger maker tournament and anyone who participates in all three challenges is going to automatically get that $20 gift card to Michaels. So even if you miss the last challenge, you can go back and finish it for participation points. So I would love to see what you guys make. As always, all the information about tagging us is going to be at the end of this video and I will see you guys next time.